Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Welcome back. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long, long time. I think it's been two weeks. By the time you see this video, it, will be that, it would have been two weeks since we last posted the video. Yes. And this is uh, me plus you is... Us. And my name is Kwame. My name is Elaine. And today, as you can see from the title, we're going to talk or we're going to do um, a little card game. Well, I made it. <laughs> How might? Yeah. Um, so we talk a lot about culture and differences and how sometimes we clash, but we've also been talking about the things we've learned from each other's culture and how it kind of enriches our lives. Yeah. So I thought it would be cool to... Okay, it's been a long time coming. So Kwame said, like, I haven't lived in the Netherlands, so I don't have so many examples. Well, I have not lived, lived. I've, yes. I've visited a couple of times. Yes for longer so yeah. like a month or a month at most or five yes. weeks at most yes. so it's, it's not a lot to um, have a, a very strong opinion on. yeah but so uh, then i came up with like cert i came up with a few topics that i think will guide us through like the the things we've learned from each other's from culture each other, yes yeah so, so how are we going to go about it you decide you you created the cards Okay, I can do the first one and then you go. So you oh. do pick, 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 pick. So I'm right. gonna pick. All right, let's go. All right, the first one. I'm sure Kwame will put it in the screen. Uh, greetings. Yes, please. <laughs> I think this one is kind of obvious. So in Ghana, or at least according to my experience, uh, greetings is very important. Yeah. So whenever you enter a room or you enter a new space or even on the street. Uh, people uh, want to greet you, uh, acknowledge you, um, and there's even different ways of greeting a person. If it's an older person, you can greet but not ask anything. <laughs> yeah. And it's always important to say please, or when you ask something, could you please? I think please is please goes with everything. Please, could you please, 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 please is the Sometimes negative. Sometimes I write work emails and I count the times of number of times I add please and it's please. a lot. No please, yes please, sorry please, yes. I beg please, please please please. Yes. <laughs> and so, I think yeah. the angle of the greetings is also when you go to a new place, for example, um, the acknowledgement you mentioned also makes people. Um, more susceptible to helping you if you yeah. get in trouble or if you need to find a place. So if you walk through a place not smiling at anybody, not greeting anybody, and you get lost, chances of finding the place or asking people for help yeah. is going to be very difficult. They're just going to look at you like, when you walked here, you didn't greet. Yeah. So who should who help are you? you? Yeah. yeah so. But even in my workplace, so previously I worked more in like a Dutch workplace yeah but now i work in a more like ghanaian or at least they're working many africans from different parts of the continent yeah and oh my in the morning the rounds of good mornings i have to do it is amazing every morning <laughs> people and like everybody comes by and says good morning how are you and i mean i love the gesture right I love that we're trying to, you know, hi, how are you? I'm checking in on you, all these things. But sometimes I just want to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be behind my computer. Tick, 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 tick. I don't want to spend, like, I appreciate it, but at the same time, sometimes I just want to get into work more than not somebody coming into my office being awkward, like, how are you? Because sometimes it doesn't flow, right? Yeah. If you do it with everybody, it won't flow and, with and everybody. And, and then that's where like, I learned about the Dutch culture that these things are not really necessary in a working space. I not mean, every day, not every day, you know, I mean, when you run into somebody, yes, but yes, yeah, go round, 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 meet everybody. They just huh? go straight to work, you know, yeah, we go, just straight go straight to, to work. work. Let me go to work. I land at my desk, open my laptop. That's sometimes what I want to do. Yeah. So you can, you can have colleagues and not necessarily be, um, uh, friendly to the point of, you know, finding out how, your home is and how you're doing and all those things yeah. they cut it off and use the time to work so that's uh, yeah that yeah. was the greetings yes please next <laughs> greetings yes please <laughs> relationship okay i mean that one i wrote that one 
or it's my from what I learned from Ghana. Let's put it okay. that way. So in Netherlands, we are very, I think if you watch our videos, you've heard this before, but in Netherlands, we are very task oriented. Now we focus on results, on getting things done, ticking things off the to-do list. Yeah. And I thrive on that because I like to structure things and I like to tick off things like who off my plates. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. I'm productive. But Ghana is really good for me or not good for me because it's challenging for me because it's different than my character. But uh, to focus more on how do we get there. So how are we together making this vlog? Instead of how do we take it off our to-do list and go on to the next thing? Yeah. And it's, I feel there's more space and attention for the person. So before we would, if we would be colleagues, for example, before we start work, we do good morning greeting. From the previous <laughs> And then... <laughs> How are you? Like, how has work been? You check in with each other, small, yeah, small. And a little bit uh, into family life. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's shallow, not deep if you don't want to talk. But they find out how maybe your kids are, if yeah, you have a spouse. Like, how, how's everything going? Yeah. So it makes it much more relaxed in the end. Not yeah, more very, personal. Yeah, more personal. And I like in Ghana, hmm, it has two sides because it's also because there's uh, sometimes chaos because there's no system in place. So that makes it more unexpected. But it also forces you to be more focused on the process. So the journey towards it. Yeah. So Ghana taught me to pace myself and focus on like the relationship more. How do you build something together, you know, instead of just getting there as quickly as possible and going on about my day. Yeah. And I still struggle with that because sometimes at work, I'm like, can we just get this done? Like, the, it's not difficult. And then I'm like, okay, this is my Dutch brain. I have to switch it off because we're in Ghana. <laughs> yeah, but um, I will go for the Dutch side of things, whereby um, in terms of relationship, they don't have to have a relationship with you to be able to tolerate you as a colleague. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so being mm. task-oriented, we can work together. We can be efficient together without necessarily being friends, yeah. which um, has its advantages and disadvantages, however you look at it. The Ghana one works f uh, to some extent, mm -hmm. and to some extent it also wastes a bit of time and also blurs some lines in yeah. like you know how you approach people when it comes to uh, maybe your colleague is slacking. But because you have um, a much more personal relationship with them, it's, it's more difficult to confront them. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Netherlands or yes. Dutch people would be about the task. Yeah, I can be, finish yeah. scolding you as a colleague or telling you my peace of mind as a colleague and then later on we're going to have a beer and laugh. It's not work. Yeah. It's outside work. That's the thing in Ghana. I feel the professional... So I, I, in Netherlands you can give feedback on the person's professional... like uh, Attitude yes. and, and performance. So as a, yes. And then I can still vibe with you as a person. But in Ghana it's very intertwined. Yeah. When I give feedback on a professional level... It is difficult. Yeah. People take, take it, it personal. very personal. They so take it personal and then it's difficult. For me, that is difficult because I can like you as a person, but if your work is not like up to what I expect or like I have to give you feedback, I will do that yeah. because it will make you better in the end. But yeah. that's not always how people look at it. Anyway, nice layered answer. Yeah. Next. Okay. Picking. Cycling. I'll go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so cycling, um, learning It relates from, to the Netherlands, right? Yes, it's very Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, so much so that uh, I think they are one of, if not the most efficient cycling nation in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they are the most. And I want to add that where I'm from, uh, Uten, Houten, has uh, been awarded with the best cycling city for like a long time in a row. Ah, uh, see? Yes. So... Yeah, cycling is something um, that I learned from the Dutch um, in improving their transportation or the efficiency of their transportation. And I think it also works for them because, well, generally, European weather is not the same as we do here. Yeah. Um, even if we had a lot of cycling lanes in Ghana, I think that most corporate spaces would also have to have um, make available showers. Yeah, in Ghana for sure. Uh, yeah, maybe a shower and changing room. Because even if we have that level of um, efficiency with our cycling as a culture, 
by the time you finish cycling to work, you'll be sweaty. You're drenched. So you need to go and shower at work and change. So yeah, um, it also speaks to their efficiency and their way of thinking in terms of solution orientedness, because mm -hmm. um, they think of different options and they yeah. build it in such a way that it's lasting generations. Yeah, so they take their time to decide on things, but when they do, it's very efficient. So, okay, yeah. But can I ask you something? Yeah. How was it for you to cycle in Netherlands, like experience-wise, okay. as a human? <laughs> like, what did you see? What did you do? Like, did so, you feel comfortable? As a human? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what else you can be, but... As a robot. <laughs> yeah. I like efficiency. <laughs> Okay, so as a human, it was a, it was a culture shock. It was one of my culture shocks. Mm -hmm. yeah. What exactly? Um, there were rules on the road because here when we're cycling, we're just cycling for the sport of it or to move from one place to another mm -hmm. uh, in a way that, I mean, you're sharing a road with cars or maybe an off-road something, you know, path, and it's fine. But there were literally rules. So that's where my culture shock came in. You have to signal when you're going left. You have to stop at the traffic light. You have to be in your own cycling lane even. Yeah. So, um, yeah, cycling there uh, and cycling almost everywhere was also <laughs> challenging for me because that's a lot of exercise that you're yeah. doing every single day. And I, I, I had a couple of experiences with her in, in cycling where we had to share one bicycle and I was like... We are not good at that. No. Let's put it that I way. I cannot do one bicycle and sit on the back or cycling oh. with her. Like, Sorry for the noisy neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a noisy neighborhood. Yes. So forgive us. I cannot do that. So I enjoyed cycling to some extent. Oh, that's a loud truck. Yeah. I enjoy cycling to some extent. Uh, not with sharing a bike. Not with sharing a bike. And I think I also need to stay in the Netherlands for a while to adapt yeah. to it. So, yeah. Especially for me, it I was like really it. nice to see Kwame cycle. And in the end, I mean, he likes to walk more. Oh, I, I than love to walk. Cycling. But for me, it, it felt nice to share that experience of cycling because that's how we grow up. Like, ever since you are a child, you will learn how to cycle and then you'll go anywhere. Yeah. So, for me, it was nice to share. Okay, next one. You're picking. Please. You had two, actually. I, go, I, I let went... it slide. Wow, okay. Yes. Okay, communal meals. Beep, beep. <laughs> I mean, like, this one I wrote, or from Ghana. Uh, meals in general and food in general in Ghana is very important. Meals are important everywhere. No, in Netherlands, we'll eat a sandwich for lunch and behind our desk and quickly we'll go back to work. In Ghana, <laughs> please, food is life. Food is life. How so what do you mean by communal meals? So, wait, I'm coming, okay? Also something very Ghanaian I've learned. I'm coming. Um, it's really something people look forward to. Like lunch is a big thing. In the workplace, that's a big thing. What are you eating today? Have you eaten today? It's like, uh, in the Netherlands, we talk a lot about the weather because it's very unpredictable, right? So yeah. you're always like, oh, the weather is bad today. Yeah, it's really bad. So da, da. In Ghana, you talk about food. What have you had? And whenever I'm in an Uber or I meet somebody new, a Ghanaian, and I've said that I've been there, they start asking me, What's have you had fufu? Food? Have you had this? Have you had this? I say yes to everything. And they are so surprised. It's a big thing, food in Ghana. And the communal thing is, for example, you can share, I've never done that in my life, share like a fufu bowl and eat together. Yeah. Or share, uh, I think, bangku, share banku, right? Rice balls, king cake. King cake, king cake especially. Yeah, so you share. And then you have this um, tradition or habit. So Ghanaians will always invite you. So when somebody's eating and I'm coming, you say you're invited. Yes. And most of the times, 99% of the times, they don't mean you are invited for real. <laughs> but at least, like, the idea it's of polite. having a communal and a community. And it's also polite. My food is your food. Ah, in Dallas, we, won't, we don't do that. My bread is my bread. Don't touch. <laughs> like, no, no, nobody's polite no about the other sandwich. Yes, there's no <laughs> such thing as sharing, a, like, a communal meal. <laughs> but here in Ghana, hey, the bread is I'm making I'm laughing you laugh. because of... The fact that people invite people and hope that they say no, actually. Yeah. 
But I have had I have had some instances that people that I said uh, that somebody said you're invited and I said oh I'm okay. They said like no 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 you're really invited. invited. Yeah, and then you can sit down and you know. Um, so I always double check, especially if people are not so close to me. Yeah. I check like oh are you so sure you want to share? If you don't want um, to be literal or you know, if, if, if you don't know the person you're inviting is a literal person, as in they, they take everything you're saying literally, please if, don't, don't say you're invited if you're not ready. And people find it funny that I also do it, especially at work. So when they come into the kitchen or I'm preparing my meal, I sit down and say, P, you're invited. People are like, oh, oh, like, yeah, because they... This they, girl knows. Yeah, because they didn't expect that from yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, next No, time. you go. You go twice. Okay. Efficiency and planning. Yeah. That I, was, I, I had mentioned that um, a bit in the previous... Especially with the cycling and everything. So that's, that's, that's um, one thing that I've learned from the Dutch culture. Mm -hmm. um, they take a while also learning from... So I'm going from personal to like projects based so they take a while to decide most Dutch people i've encountered takes a while to, take a while to decide on things but when they do that's because most of the time they're spending a lot of the time on research on thinking through on like you know planning. deciding options planning mm -hmm. what works what doesn't work i mean how would how would people react to it or how will i feel about it in the end mm -hmm. and then when that decision is like finally gotten or they come to the point of the planning and the research and everything, they go, 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 go. And it's very efficient. And it's usually also very long-term. Mm -hmm. um, from her, I'm not saying speaking for every Dutch person, from uh, her, her personal experience, or as far as I know, when we were even deciding to be together, it took a while for her to... <laughs> I had to do some research. <laughs> and soul-searching and, you know, aligning yeah. your heart and Thinking mind. Thinking through things yeah. is definitely... It took a while for her to you know, decide whether or not. But when she committed, here we are seven years later. Mm. So, yeah, and her previous relationship was even five years before she met me. So I know that with efficiency and planning is, is a Dutch thing. Um, I'm not saying all oh, Dutch people commit five years into relationships or whatever it is. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that. That's just me. No. Uh, with their engineering, with being uh, me... Uh, like geography wise where the country is yeah. situated even if you fly above netherlands you see these squares like and maybe you can even put it in the edits so uh, an above side from the netherlands you see like I'm everything is super it. planned <laughs> just do um i know how to find it okay. you'll put the picture right there okay <laughs> Better edit that well. Uh, you see, everything is super structured and planned. Yeah. But for me, I'm wondering, how was it for you, especially in the beginning? Because I can be somebody who's quite trying to do things efficiently and Ooh, ticking it, off it was, boxes. It was, uh, no, okay. So when it comes to that, ticking off boxes, mm -hmm. it, it became a bit um, too... Rigid? Yes. And yes. yeah, robotic in my opinion, in that sense. <sighs> Yeah, so activity-based taking off boxes is a bit too much for me. But in terms of how the city runs, mm. it was then a, you enjoy it. Oh eh? yeah, it was a then breath. Then it's not rigid at all. No, it was a <laughs> breath of fresh air to know that yo, buses this time when they say it's eleven forty something. Yeah, for you, it's really at, nice. At, uh, at most, it's going to be two minutes late, and I have an issue with lateness and timeliness. Yeah. I don't know how to turn that switch off for me. So to go to a country where everything was on time, I'd, the most delay I would have in public transportation was five minutes. And I was like, wow. So the efficiency and the planning was like yes. spot on. But sometimes we are a bit me. rigid. Yeah, but when it comes to putting that same efficiency and planning into activities like holiday activities. Yeah, so today we're going here, we're doing this at 11, yes. this, this, and we'll drink this beer, and we'll do this, and we'll eat here. And we'll, <laughs> right okay I, I can can we just like you know chill yeah and be spontaneous a little bit like oh this is nice let's try it boom yeah. makes for good memories done to plan your day and possibly miss so you miss out on yeah things you mix out on better stories spontaneous things yep. memories good memories when you over plan that's my opinion 
No, I agree. I think La yeah. for me, that's what being in Ghana taught me to yeah. be more spontaneous and like not beat every spontaneity yeah. out of the day. Yeah. And sometimes it's frustrating, yes. But sometimes you also get the best experiences from it when and you just see how the day goes. Life happens when you're busy planning. Yeah, I guess that's a Dutch thing. Yeah. I don't know. Life happens. So Next card. The real things are happening when you're actually busy planning and trying to stay on top. This one is yours. Solution oriented. Yes. Solution. Show the people. Solution oriented. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one thing I've learned from um, the Dutch culture. Mm -hmm. um, fix, fix, fix is also their thing. It's also um, tied to efficiency and planning. Um, Dutch engineering is one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the sea was claiming land, but they've been able to find solutions to um, stop the sea from claiming land. And they've even claimed more land <laughs> from, yes. from the sea and everything. It's crazy, actually. And so, this was like, I don't know which century, but like this wasn't like in modern times. No, they did, they it, did it like way... Way, way back. back yeah so they are very solution oriented they, they are always finding a, a way to solve an issue the best way possible so yeah it's something i really appreciate about um, dutch yeah. culture and yeah, it's also with her as well oh. in, as a person mm -hmm. yeah. thank you she's, i think that's a compliment yeah she's more solution oriented than i am I mean, but honestly, I can I say something about Ghana as like opposite? I think Ghanaians are also very creative and innovative. Because yes, the Dutch people are solution oriented. But on the other hand, in Ghana, not everything works the way it should work. So you always so find people make ways, it work. Yeah, find ways and out. it's more creative than in the Netherlands. Because in the Netherlands, you kind of build on top of the working I don't blueprint. want to say, yeah, there's a blueprint, let's put it like that. Yeah. And in Ghana, sometimes the blueprint is a bit shattered, like it's there, but it's not there, or it's there, but it works differently. And then people still get to make, like, they do what they want to do, uh, despite of that sometimes not everything is in place. So I like that resilience and as well. It's a different kind of solution oriented, but I admire it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think we are. I agree. Boats. I agree. Mm. Like we, we find um, uh, fixes, like our own creative fixes. Like almost everything is a challenge, and then you have to figure out, you know, a DIY solution. Yes, that's the word. That, that's the phrase I was looking for. A yeah. DIY solution to things, you know, patch it up and see. Okay, go because here, go there, go in there. In Ghana, go no is never the answer. There's no. always even. Okay, it's a very small thing, but I appreciate it. So uh, sometimes I take both to work, but I was out of cash and I was like, okay, let's stop at the ATM. And I come to the ATM, the ATM is not working. I'm like, there's no other ATM on my route. So I came into the boat and said, uh, sorry, like the ATM is not working. Uh, and then it's like, oh, you can do Momo. Like, oh, okay, cool. So like the, people really switch quickly to another, works, like, oh, yeah. okay, this doesn't work. Da, da, da. If that wouldn't work, we could go if to you, another if ATM. Give, yeah, if, you give a taxi, if you give a taxi driver or this thing, um, a, a too big a note and they can't find change, they quickly get out and go to the yeah. woman selling this, like, you know, change this for me quickly. And, you know, so yeah. Yeah, so there's also that. We all find yeah. our solutions. Anyway. Yeah. This one, <laughs> I'm scared to talk about. This is not necessarily what... Okay, yeah, I learned from your culture, but I don't necessarily like it. So, Kwame calls it eye surface. Yeah. Um, so, the fact... This happens especially in an office environment, so to say. So, people keep an eye on what you are doing, <sighs> what time you come in, what time do you leave, does it look like you're working. Yeah. People... Honestly, I didn't know. People really monitor my WhatsApp status. They, when I put something on Instagram, everybody comes to me like, hey, you're enjoying it, huh? I'm enjoying it. I'm like, oh. Like sometimes, and or the same with um, when I go for a walk in the neighborhoods. Nine out of 10 times, I come home and come and say, oh, this person saw you. Oh, this person saw you. And I'm like, ah. What is this? Like, I'm not necessarily liking that because it makes me very self-aware. Yeah. Also, as I mean, 
in the neighborhood, I'm like, why are you watching me? Why are you calling my husband that he sees me? He knows I'm walking the dog or jogging. So, like, why do you need to, like, tell somebody that you saw me? Yeah. Even though maybe it's also something to reach out, like, oh, I saw your wife, how are you? Like, that thing. So it's also a reminder. But in a workplace, for me, it's very difficult because productivity, for me, I know when I'm most productive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But in Ghana, you have this kind of old school, sorry to say, I think it's old school, kind of uh, that... If you're in the office, you are working. If you're out of the office, you're not working. You're not working. Yeah, that was what I was waiting for you to say. However, yeah. for my position, so I'm a business developer. If I would be in the office, I would be a bad business developer. Yeah. I need to be out there meeting people, pitching. Forming relationships. Yeah, like, and that doesn't always happen in the office. Of course, we have team calls, we have Zoom calls. I do that too, but the in-person interactions are very important. So when I go for lunch, it's not enjoyment. Of course, I'm happy to go for yeah, lunch. But lunch is also very functional. Yes, and I meet a you, possible yeah. person, like a possible partner. Yeah. And then people say, oh, enjoyment. I'm like, ah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm getting so tired of explaining because <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm done explaining. So my supervisor knows how I work, what works for me. If I go to meetings, she can look it up in my agenda. She knows I'm not chilling. So I'm done explaining the ice service yeah. thing. And so, so it's just more like people here, um, for example, we stay in the office extra hours um, just so their boss can see that they are committed to working or they are uh, working hard. Like they seem to be doing something. That's, that's not efficiency. That's not productivity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, people like to make people think or it seem, yeah, the, you know, the facade to seem that oh, such a hard worker, he's here at yeah. 6 a.m. and he's leaving at 8 p.m. Bro, you can be here at 6 a.m. and leave at 8 p.m. and don't, don't do jack and I can come at 9 to 4 and do twice as much as you did. So, yeah, yeah. people like eye service a lot. And also, it doesn't make sense, especially in this context, right? Accra, there's always traffic. So people will see me leave me leave work at four. That's when we close. You know why I leave at four? If I leave ten minutes later, I'll be in traffic. <laughs> so anything I have to do, I'll bring it home. But those people in the office don't see what I do at home. You get me? So I think this eye surface thing, it sometimes uh, balances with being judgmental. The keeping an eye on each other and having an opinion about it. Yeah. Well, you have this much information about somebody. Honestly, for me, this kind of thing taught me to be less, less judgmental and more asking questions. Yeah. Oh, wow, you're going out. What, what are you up to? What kind of meeting? I'm interested. Instead of judging like, oh, this person's already going. Why? And honestly, please, re rest. <laughs> no, but I know people like to show off how much they work. I understand. But please, rest is also productive. Close your laptop, go home, spend time with your family, revive yourself. The next day, you'll kick ass at work. Instead of staying, looking if your boss is looking, and you're there till eight. But it's not fault if you ask me as well. I'm okay, yes, I know the, 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 the culture is there. Yeah. But it's also, it's, it's, it's also come from a space where people also grew from maybe... Uh, lower ranks to higher ranks and that's what they've seen their bosses do so when they become bosses they expect that they see their workers at like, or the subordinates at work all the time and they keep an eye on it and they think that people who stay longer at work are working i understand yeah i understand where it comes from we have the same thing in Netherlands. the nine to five thing is very important but please we've lived through COVID. we've worked from home We've showed we can product, be productive yeah, anywhere. A lot of businesses have shown they can yes. be very productive, and especially then, the service industry. Yes. So this is my call to be less judgmental and look more at ask yourself as well. Be you curious. People are going to be watching. <laughs> That's fine. When are you most productive? Yeah. F figure that out for yourself. When are you really putting like, like yeah, I'm on a roll. Yeah. And then milk that and do as much as possible. Look at your results and not only your hours. You're yeah. not there to sit there. You are there to work. Yeah. Do the work. Yeah. And 
Not this eye service thing. Okay, rant over. <laughs> I can't believe you kept going hey. on. So the video is becoming a bit long. And so what we're going to do is to break this video in two parts, parts one and two. So if you're watching the video up to the point where I'm introducing this right now, this is the end of part one. And look forward to part two. Hang in, in the there for part two.